Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, I'll show you how to use the build project we created in the previous lecture to build another Docker image and push that Docker image to Docker Hub. To start, the first thing we are going to do is create a repository in Docker Hub that we will push the new image to. So let's go to our Docker Hub account. In your Docker Hub account, select create repository. Give the repository a name. I'll call this repository Jupyter-AS. Once you've given the repository a name, select public and click create. Once you have created your repository in Docker Hub, let's go to our project folder in Visual Studio Code. In your project folder in Visual Studio Code, the next thing you are going to do is create another folder for the image you want to build and put your Docker file in that folder. So what we are going to do here is right click here and we will select new folder. Give the folder a name and remember what we said. The name you give the folder has to be the same name you want to tag your Docker image. So I want to tag my Docker image Jupyter. I'll name the folder Jupyter. Once you've given the folder a name, press enter. And as you can see, I've created another folder called Jupyter. Once you have created the folder for your Docker image, in this folder, we will create our Docker file. So I want you to right click on the folder you just created and select new file. Give the file a name. We will call it Docker file. When you type Docker file, make sure the D is a capital letter and press enter. There you go. We have created Docker file. Once you have created the Docker file, the next thing I want you to do is open the reference file I created for this lecture in this video's description. This is the Docker file we will use to build another image and push the image to the repository we just created. So what I want you to do is select everything in this file. I'll press Ctrl A to select everything. Then right click to copy. Once you copy it, close it. Then I'm going to paste it in our Docker file. Once you've pasted it, save the file, select file, and select save all. Once you've saved the file, we are going to push our changes to our GitHub repository. Select source control, type a message. I'm going to type created new Docker file. Once you type your message, click commit, then click sync changes. And there you go. We have pushed our changes to our GitHub repository. Let's go to our GitHub repository to verify that the change is there. In my GitHub repository for this project, remember our repository is CICD build Docker image. If I click refresh in here, there you go. You can see the folder we just add. If I select it, in it, I have my Docker file. So now that I've created the folder and add my Docker file into this folder, I will start another build in code build to build my Docker image and push that image to Docker Hub. And on the code build console, this is our build project, the CICD build Docker image. Select it. Once you've selected it, we are going to start a build. But instead of clicking this, we are going to start a build with overrides. So click this. Then scroll down in here. Under environment variables override, select this drop down. Then scroll down. For our environment variables, we are going to update the values here. The tag name is going to change because we are building a new image and we want to tag our new image Jupyter. For example, if I go to Visual Studio Code, I'm going to click Explorer here. I'm building a new image and I want to tag the image Jupyter. So for my environment variable image tag, I will enter Jupyter in there. Make sure you enter the name exactly how you type the folder name. Then for our Docker Hub username, it is going to be the same name. And our Docker Hub password it is going to be the same. The next value we will update is the Docker Hub repo name. Remember, we are building this image and pushing this image to a different repo. So I'll go to my Docker Hub account. In my Docker Hub account, this is the repo name, Jupyter-AS. I'll select it and copy it. Then I'll come back to code build. And under the environment variable Docker Hub repo name, I'm going to paste it here. So these are the values we need to update. 
once you've updated your values, click Start Build. And there you go. It has started the build. The status is in progress. Remember, if we select the face detail, you will see that it has submitted the request. The queue is succeeded and now it is provisioning the container. Once the container has been provisioned, it will run our buildspec.yaml file to build the new Docker image and push that image to Docker Hub. I'm going to select the build logs tab. So when the container is provisioned, we will see the logs down here. We'll give it some time to provision the container. And there you go. It has provisioned the container and we can see the logs here. You can see it has installed Python. If I scroll down here, it has run the commands to make the shell script file executable. And here it is running the shell script to build the image. If we scroll down, we can see the outputs. It is building the image here. I'll continue to scroll down. And once it has built the image, you can see here, it is pushing the image to Docker Hub. If we scroll down, you can see here, it is preparing. It has pushed the image and here it says succeeded. So what this means is we have successfully built the new image and push that image to our new Docker Hub repository. So let's scroll back up just to see the status of our build. And there you go. You can see the status of the build is succeeded. So next, if we go to Docker Hub and check the repository we just created, we should see our new Docker image in there. I'll go to Docker Hub and this is my new repository. I'll click refresh. And there you go. You can see my new image in that repository. This is how you can use this code build job to build as many Docker image you want and push them to Docker Hub. If you have any questions on this lecture or there's any part you don't understand, please leave your comments below. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.